Hello and welcome to this edition of Conversation. I'm your host, Dave Heisey. On today's show, we'll be, we'll be discussing some of the many accomplishments of the Scotch Plain Fanwood High School's music program and discussing some of the other components that make up our music program at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School. First, I'd like to introduce our guests for today's show. We're going to start with our first guest, Whitney Slayton. Whitney is, has been very much involved in the music program at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School, and Whitney is a senior at the high school. Second is Mr. Duran Thomas. Mr. Thomas is the band director at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School. Next is Mrs. Lori Wellman. Mrs. Wellman is the choral director. Mr. Vinnie Tutoriello is the supervisor of the music program. And finally, Meryl Buzrusik is a senior at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School and has been very much involved in the music program as well as performing arts at the high school. What I'm going to do is start with Mr. Toriello and just uh, have Mr. Toriello talk to us about some of the accomplishments that our music program has made this year. So I'll turn things over to Mr. Toriello. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about, uh, I know we, we've, every, it seems every time that um, the band or the chorus or some group in our music program goes to a competition, you return with quite a few trophies. So uh, things have been going quite well this year. Well, thank you, Dr. Heisey. Um, if I was to recap the year, um, being able to have my two colleagues here as well as two wonderful students, uh, I'll probably let them talk about maybe the areas that they actually you know, worked with this year, and I'll refer to my areas. Um, I think our number one accomplishment um, which a lot of people are not realized, and I'm sure you realize coming to the school, is that we have you know, quite a few students involved in the music program. And this year, once again, uh, as approximately almost 50% of the total high schools involved in our program, one, one way or the other. Uh, I think we're very proud of that, that fact, not only the, just the number, but the type of kid. Um, we have athletes in the program. We have scholars in the program. Uh, Jessica Beagleson, the valedictorian, uh, class valedictorian, is our drum major, as well as his first clarinet and wind ensemble. And I can go on and on with all different, uh, whether it's nationalities, religious backgrounds, uh, it's one big melting pot, which I really think, I mean, I think, I know the three of us are, are very proud of uh, that accomplishment. Uh, if you talked about every one of our groups uh, achieving uh, the achievements they've had this year, they were all outstanding. And I'll, again, I'll let them refer to their groups. Uh, the two main groups that I worked with during the year are uh, Moon Glowers and our Wind Ensemble. Um, Whitney has been my lead alto in, in Moonglowers uh, this year, and uh, he just led this group to all kinds of accomplishments. Uh, th four or five times they, they captured state tournaments. Uh, they, once again, they got to the state finals. Um, he's received a number of soloist awards. Uh, the group is just you know one accolade after the other, and this group is, I believe, over almost over 40 years old. I was in one elementary school this morning, and I had my Moonglowers jacket on, and this woman doing the voting happened to say, Moonglowers, I remember them back in 1946. And I you know, just had a chuckle at that. I said, well, they're, they're still going, still going strong. Uh, the other group I direct is the Wind Ensemble. And I really believe that this group is up and coming. And uh, this year we got to the state finals as, as one of the highest selected uh, concert bands in the state. We performed at uh, College in New Jersey as a special performance. And Merrill is a clarinetist in that group, as well as uh, Whitney is the alto sax player also in that. So, I was very proud of those accomplishments, but before I turn it over to maybe Mr. Thomas, the marching man, I'd like to say that uh, the type of kids that we develop, um, a lot of people don't realize how much education goes on, whether it's a marching band competition, a Washington, D.C. trip, uh, a choral competition, trying out for region, uh, soloing in front of a group. Um, there's a lot more education being there, taught there than I think people give us credit for or even give the department credit for. And, and the kids who do work, they work extremely hard. So maybe uh, if you want, I'll turn it over to Mr. Thomas, and he can talk about a little bit the marching band, which he is uh, the director of. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tutorial. Uh, the marching band, <clears throat> I think, probably enjoyed its most successful year uh, this year since I've been here. Uh, it's my fifth year teaching at Scotch Plains Family High School, and definitely one of my most enjoyable. Um, not only competitively, but I think the whole group really took on somewhat of a family atmosphere, uh, and it, it really shown through on the field in their performance. Whitney Slayton here, as Mr. Dottoriello mentioned, 
was not only a not only a member of the jazz bands, but he was also one of our featured soloists in the marching band, uh, and it, he was one of our seniors that we're definitely going to miss next year. But uh, in the performance, in the competitive performance arena, the band did very, very well this year. Uh, our finals that we had in Giant Stadium, uh, as a member of the USSBA, the United States Scholastic Band Association, uh, we placed third in our class, scoring a 90.0. Uh, and that was probably their best finish uh, since I've been here and, and it might be one of their better finishes overall uh, since the band has been competing in that circuit. Uh, so competitively they were great as well as being invited uh, to perform in the Cherry Blossom Parade that we performed in in Washington DC and that was a great, a great time. Uh, we got a chance to see many, many marching bands there, very high quality, high caliber and they performed very well. Uh, so it was a great time as well. Uh, as the jazz ensembles, I, a lot of schools in Union County and the state don't have uh, a jazz band at all. We're fortunate enough here to have two jazz bands, of which I direct uh, the what we call the B band, but, or the second jazz band, uh, and they were outstanding. Uh, they also had a great year uh, this year. So overall, I think it was, it was a very successful year, uh, both in the competitive arena and the non-competitive arena. Uh, I've heard many, many positive comments from uh, parents, friends, uh, townspeople have all said uh, what a great job that the kids are doing and, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, I was very, very happy and I hope to look forward to many, many more. You know, and, and I noticed um, Mr. Tutorial mentioned that we have a large number of students involved in the music program. When you go from the choral component to the instrumental and, and you know, I would even include the, uh, the performing arts or the, the musical Greece. To what would you attribute that? And anyone can answer that. I mean, may, maybe maybe Merrill or, or Whitney would, would be interested in answering that. We, we, we really have overwhelming participation, which I think is outstanding. And, um, and I also like to see the fact that a number of the students that are involved in either marching band or uh, moon glows or S SPF jazz or the chorus are also involved in other activities as well. They're very active students. Um, what, to what do you attribute that? Anyone? Yeah, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, staying involved with all of it, it takes a lot of time, um, but it's definitely worth it. Um, and on top of that, I mean, obviously you have the homework and a lot of the kids in the band, um, including me, we all take either academic or, you know, the accelerated and the AP courses, and that puts on a lot of homework. So you're juggling a lot of things at the same time. Um, and then on top of that, we have the sports, and I know people are involved with that. Um, but <laughs> with, um, with, like, the musical, um, that takes up the majority of, um, I think we ran from the end of January and now well, the beginning. beginning of January. <laughs> we started beginning in January and the show went on the end of March and that was almost every day and it's, you know, it's a lot of time but it's so much fun and, and Mrs. Wellman and also uh, Miss McGovern who helps out um, with the acting portions, um, it, they just, they're unbelievable and they really, they help everyone and it's lots of fun and they're, you know, they're the ones who make it that much fun and put everything into it, so. I think the key word in our program is flexibility. Um, we find a way, if a kid wants to be involved in our program, we will find a way to allow them to be part of it. Um, mm -hmm. At one time until we went to the early morning classes, uh, we had you know, we had offensive, defensive football players in marching band because the marching band did rehearse at 7 o'clock in the morning, um, and, and all athletes were, were part of it. At one time, you know, there was over 150 musicians, and now with the jazz band, you, you look at the moon glowers. I, I don't do this because I, I like getting up early, but, you know, to have the kids there at 645, except when Whitney's probe is breaking down, um, <laughs> we, we start rehearsal at like 10 to 7 and, and go to like 28 when the first group of um, AP or science, early science classes, you know, kids are leaving, but, you know, we, we have to be flexible to meet these, these kids' schedule and to keep our program as strong as it is. And I think you, all three of us would agree, if anybody comes to us and says, I want to be part of this, 
um, we'll do whatever we can to, to get them in. Let's say I'm a parent of a, of a student in one of the middle schools and, I'm, you know, and, and I need to know, or I'm a student at one of the middle schools and I'm interested in becoming involved in some component of the music program. It could be the marching band, you know, it could be one of the jazz bands, it could be the chorus. What, would, what advice would you give to that student? And maybe I can have Whitney um, answer that as far as getting involved in the music program at the high school level. And then I might ask one of the, the staff members, what advice would you give to that parent? What could that, what can these people do to prepare for really what Mr. Toriel just said? It's a matter, matter of budgeting time, being able to manage your time. Um, Whitney, what advice would you give a, a young person at one of the middle schools? Well, the end of the music department, it's important to have um, a desire to play music. Um, to have some type of music education beforehand, beforehand, like in the middle schools, they should obviously be in band and they should practice at home. Um, if they want to stride for the jazz bands, they could start, you know, listening to jazz now. Um, so when they come up to the high school, they can sort of know what's going on. Um, but one of the great things about the high school is that colleges are looking for students to have kind of a, uh, an array of extracurricular activities. And this high school seems to, as Mr. T said, be flexible. The different um, clubs, um, athletics, um, coaches can talk to these music teachers here and um, agree on the time in which a student could participate and say a track meet or a concert and things like that. And that's really important for a student to look into. But basically the whole idea of the band, unless you're becoming, decide to become a, a pro professional musician or pursue music in a serious form, the main purpose is to have fun. And that's what I've had, in addition to learning all the things that I did here. Okay, that's great. Mrs. Wellman, what, would, what advice could you give to a, the parent of a middle school student uh, who's interested in becoming part of the music program? Well, first I would have them be aware that they can work their way into these courses not to be overwhelmed that learning to budget your time will benefit you in high school and beyond high school um, you'll pick up a poise i think in high school that many people don't think they're capable of uh, we just were in the middle schools today uh, auditioning for show choir and i heard a couple of little kids say oh i can't do that i can't go and dance mara was there <laughs> i can't do that and yet I look at show choir this year and the number of soloists as juniors, seniors, some sophomores who stood there in front of huge audiences and sang um, with movements and, and uh, you know, facial expressions. And they didn't do this when they came here. You know, they, they managed to pick up this poise, which certainly once you have, um, you have it, you can use it throughout your entire life, whether it's applying for a job or, you know, anything you might use. So... I think that students should be encouraged in the middle school to sing, to, to get into different portions of the program. Um, you do have many opportunities in our department, and I think that's what perhaps separates us from some of the others I know of. There are de departments in other schools sometimes where you're not allowed to be in the instrumental and the choral department at the same time. They conflict. Mm -hmm. And I think I credit Mr. T with this, that at least he has always made sure that he supports our program as well as I try to work things so that when it's an important day for him that the kids are able to participate and again it's not for the two of us it's for the kids so that they get the chance to participate in these groups you never know after they leave here which aspect will become the most important to them yeah. how, how do you how do you as an instructor and I can I'll, I'll address this question to any one of you three um, every time we have a concert, a choral concert, uh, you know, a jazz concert, uh, you know, an, an instrumental, the 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 final product is outstanding. Every, every every one I've been to, it's it's been outstanding. If I'm a student and um, again I'm involved in the music program, what's my time commitment? It's not obviously it's not just during the course of the day. There's there's you know <coughs> let's talk let's talk chorus and let's talk. Um, you know, some of the groups that are 
part mm -hmm. of the, the vocal program, and what, what's a time commitment for a student? All right, first you need to know which groups are involved in the choral program. <clears throat> There's a 300 voice concert choir, and that meets during the day for rehearsals. But obviously, if I'm going to have a concert, I have to at some point put them all together mm -hmm. uh, with accompanists and so forth. And so those rehearsals occur either before school, well actually those rehearsals would only occur before school and once before a concert during the day. As far as my show choir, they will um, practice one, two mornings a week and one afternoon a week. Um, there's quite a few hours associated with that. There's choreography to learn and music. Um, the, there are two honors courses which occur both after school and those are my select uh, men and women, or mixed and women's choir. And those groups probably put in additional time beyond that. Those are the two groups that are eligible to audition for all state chorus, region chorus, and the groups that go beyond the high school. I would say at least maybe even three quarters of my job is beyond school hours. And that I mean, includes a musical as well. That occurs in the spring. Mm -hmm. So these students must uh, become acquainted with when these events occur and the good thing is as far as the instrumental side of things we kind of stagger it so we're not we're not there's nobody so totally overwhelmed that they can't accomplish something in both areas mm -hmm. now the only time we do something the same moment is when we go on a trip with the entire department and then by that time of the year um, the students are pretty well uh, rehearsed mm -hmm. and competent to handle that. So um, again, I think the biggest benefit of that is that management of time and learning how. You don't, you don't have it when you necessarily get there. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to figure out the best time to squeeze in this and that and you know, when your music lesson might come and when can I get to dance lessons. And, you know. I know Whitney and Merrill and actually a couple other students that, that aren't here today, but I know both, both of you are pursuing music. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you're, and I'll let you talk in a few moments, but I know, th I know you're both pursuing music I I in higher ed. And my question is, when did you realize that's what you wanted to do? When did you know that you wanted to go to college or university and, f and have that as the focal point of your education? Start with either one of you, but you know I'd like to hear from from both of you as, as far as uh, you know what 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 influences. And, and I know I was at the the Carl concert the other night, and a couple of the people had said you know the reason why they're you know they're so committed to the music program was because of Mrs. Wellman. So that certainly is a, a tribute to Mrs. Wellman. So let's talk you know let's talk a little bit about. It. We'll start with Mara. Um, I think I realized it when I was maybe a sophomore or a junior and when I was a sophomore I had the supporting lead in our show we did crazy for you I was Irene Roth and I had so much fun and um, it was another side of me that I didn't really know I had and um, and then it continued on and to me and my girl I had the lead I was Sally Smith and it was just another portion um, that really showed me that I could I could really get on stage and really act out this part and um, and then this year when we did Grease, I was Rizzo, and that, you know, it's a totally different character from the other two characters, and um, it really it uh, it extracted um, all these different parts that I just you know little components I didn't know were really there, but they are, and also um, uh, let's see, <laughs> um, I mean that I give to, you know I thank Miss Wellman and Miss McGovern. Um, and also, I um, uh, what else? <laughs> I well, I was in all uh, all state jazz choir this year, and I thank Mr. T and Mr. Thomas for helping me out with that. Um, that was another thing. I had been in all state choir and region choir, and you know, it's um, we're in like you know some classical music and uh, you know some modern music, but with the jazz, a totally different element. Um, and then when I did that, I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> I can take care of all parts. Um, so uh, that really boosted my confidence. It really helped out. And I think with all that falling together, um, probably around like, you know, last year, my junior year, and this year even more so, um, it made me realize that I wanted to go into music and also theater. And 
it's really exciting. I um, I was I'm now in Wagner's music program. I'm a, in as a non-major, and I'm in their theater program as a major. But they have a jazz choir. They have regular choirs like we have here, the Las Con, Tadoras, and also the Select. And I'm going to be a part of all of it, and I can't wait. <laughs> Well, that's so. great, and it's great that the opportunities that were provided you here at the high mm -hmm. school, you know, helped to nurture that. So that, that's yes. good to hear. Whitney, how about you? Well, when I first came to the high school, I really didn't think I was going to pursue music at all. Um, it was just another activity in the day. Um, however, music has always been a part of my life. I've I lived in a musical family. Um, my father, from a really young age, exposed me to jazz, and I. I was talking to him recently about it, and he said, I would listen to Coltrane and Cannonball Adderley a lot, mm -hmm. almost on a weekly basis, every Saturday. Um, I also listened to classical music then, too. But So when I got to the high school, um, uh, I would just mess around, I call it, on the saxophone, you know, <laughs> in between me uh, measure rests and things like that. And um, I guess Mr. Thomas kind of heard that and said, why doesn't he try jazz and so I tried I tried out on the on the alto sax I think and the tenor sax and he put me in on on the alto sax and I just started improvising then um, I just saw that tape I think a couple of days ago <laughs> very interesting to watch uh, I'll call it interesting yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> um, so that that got me inspired to do more with jazz and then I tried out I had a good year that year um, I learned a lot in one year. I um, I went on to try out for the Moonglowers, which I've heard about. I had I've had neighbors who've been in the New Moonglowers. I've heard them play before too, and I said that could never ever be me. Um, and I tried out for that, and surprisingly, I made that. And from Mr. T, he's pushed me to do to get better, to get better. Not that I didn't want to get better. I wanted to along with him. <laughs> um, so. Between the two up here that I've I've been with, I've learned a lot, and I've learned to love the music even more. Um, we had an excellent year with Moonglowers, and despite the fact that it was a competition versus a few schools, it was nothing but fun and pure education. So I'd have to say that without this music department, I would not have the desire for the future I, I have now. I don't think I could have done that without these people up here. That's, that's good to hear. And I, I recall, similar to what I said um, about Mrs. Wellman, I remember being at a concert, and I believe you extended that same statement to Mr. Thomas about how he's really helped you grow as a, as a sax player and so on. So that's uh, I mean the ultimate compliment to the, to the teacher. Um, maybe a, a question for Mr. Thomas that I, that, that I had asked Mrs. Wellman, and that, and that is, the time commitment. Let's let's say let's talk about marching band. I, and I know there's a number of components in the the instrumental program, but really the marching band is really going to be the the um, the next activity. I mean, the school year is almost over, and uh, band camp is in August, and um, that's probably going to be your next major responsibility and time commitment. I would imagine. Yep. Uh, th th let's talk a little bit about that time commitment uh, for you and for the student. Um, and because our marching band has been very successful and I'm sure they'll continue to be. Yeah, I think they will continue to be successful. I hope they will uh, anyway. But uh, yes, our marching band uh, does a lot in a little bit of time, I'll say. Uh, a lot of schools that we see on a yearly basis um, take the marching band very, very seriously. Uh, at, not that we don't, but I think they take it almost to the point of being maniacal. Uh, they rehearse every day for five or six hours a day, you know, uh, and we don't do that, um, uh, mainly because the directors are probably going insane, but uh, more because the students just don't have time. You know, as Mr. Tutoriello and uh, Meryl was, were saying, they're involved in so many activities. To ask them to put in that kind of time for the activity, uh, you probably wouldn't get many people uh, joining. Um, but I'll talk from my perspective as a director first. Obviously, like you said, uh, this is the time where we pick the music, write the music, get all that stuff settled, as well as uh, make sure we have our staff in place, make sure the staff 
uh, is on, on track with what we want to get out of the year, et cetera. And actually that started back in December, you know, that process of uh, picking the show. So that's all done. Uh, now it, it just comes to teaching the students. And the, the student's role and the student's time commitment, uh, once we get into the season, as you mentioned, we have band camp coming up. Uh, before band camp, we have a couple of rehearsals twice a month, uh, July uh, and a couple in August before band camp. But band camp is the last two weeks of August. Uh, and uh, it's not every day. It's Monday through Friday, then Monday through Thursday. I believe it starts on the 22nd, I believe. Uh, it's that Monday through Friday uh, of August, and then the next Monday through Thursday leading up into uh, Labor Day. Uh, and the first week is a little bit longer. Um, the second week is a little shorter. First week is uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning and it goes till about, don't get scared, 8 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> now there are a couple of breaks, breaks in there uh, for lunch and we have what we call an activity period last year where the students uh, were able to get to know each other a little bit by having kind of fun things like egg tosses and water balloon fights and water gun stuff and all kinds of fun stuff. Three-legged races, potato sack races, uh, you know, beat up the director, you know, all the f things they like to do. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, we try to make it, you know, fun for them. Uh, so uh, that, that kind of made band camp a lot more interesting. Once we got into the season, it's two rehearsals, two rehearsals a week, and that's it, for two and a half hours each, which is not a lot of time. Uh, and that only pretty much lasts till October. So the season is re relatively short for the amount of work and time that they do put in, mm -hmm. but you know, we've done okay so far. You know, I think Whitney hinted on something that's pretty amazing that has n absolutely nothing to do with music is that the students that are involved in the music department do get a chance to express themselves. They do get a chance to give something back to the listener, um, you know, which not everyone gets to do, you know, and I hope um, it's my hope that if within the marching band or the jazz bands or the concert bands, they learn this expression and they learn how to emote and they learn how to, to feel something other than the notes that are on the page. And you know, I think we've come a long way in getting them to do that. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more conversation after this message. What would you do? if you had to choose between the buffalo and the giraffes, between a flower or an elephant, what would you choose? What if you had to decide between a hundred-year-old tree and a million-year-old beach? between drinking clean water or breathing clean air. Would you make the right choice? Would there be a right choice? Now there's a way to help. Not just one, but all these things. Earthshare, the world's leading environmental groups working together. It's one choice we can all live with. Ask your employer about workplace giving. Welcome back to Conversation. I'm Dave Heisey, and we are talking about the music program at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School. And we've talked quite a bit about um, what has been and, and uh, some of the major accomplishments of the music program this year. What I thought we would do now is talk about what could be. And, and um, you know, we, we tap potential of, of the students, and, and Merrill and Whitney are, are, exam are two excellent examples of that. But let's. Um, Let's talk a little bit about other things that we could could do. Uh, you know, talk about the future of the music program and, and where we could be going. And you know, I don't know if you have any ideas. And, and, and maybe the f the two people that we should talk to first would be Whitney and Merrill. And maybe we can uh, get some ideas from them on what what things you see uh, um, could be happening uh, to help us out to provide you with even. Um, even a greater experience? Uh, most of my time has been spent with the choirs and rep theater. Um, and I'm thinking 
I know on our choreographers, we have student choreographers, and I know it's really hard on them sometimes. Um, but they do a great job, an unbelievable job. And um, I know other schools, they hire um, choreographers. I don't know if that would um, make the kids more disciplined and um, I don't know, maybe it would help them out more. I'm not quite sure. Um, but other schools do have them, and I know that they are, they're, they do put on great musicals. I think with our choreographers, I personally think that we put on um, just as good numbers as the other schools have. Um, but it might be an idea just to maybe bring it in, maybe one year, I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe, because uh, amongst the kids, sometimes there's talking in between things, you know, and kids get a little bit distracted, maybe they don't understand a move or something. Um, and maybe with another person there, an older person, maybe they'd have a little bit more respect towards them. Um, but they do, most of our choreographers, they're older, they're either juniors or seniors, so the kids do have respect for them, because they're older, and you know, the little underclassmen have to have respect for the upperclassmen. <laughs> um, but it might be an idea to do that, maybe, maybe just once, just have someone come in and you know, maybe go over things. I'm just an idea. <laughs> Whitney, any ideas? I, I mean, I realize this is a tough question. It's yeah. kind of, you know, you're not necessarily programmed to think this way, but right. it's, it's always good to hear where we, where we would like to go, you know, and, and I don't know if you have any, any ideas. Well, I guess my main part in the, the music department is the jazz program. Um, I might take jazz a little more seriously than others. Um, if I do, that that. That I'm, I don't care to change that. That's the way I am. Um, I, with the way the program is now, learned a great deal um, without any changes. As is, the program has taught me a lot. Okay. Um, maybe something that we might consider would be to bring in outside musicians, maybe to perform at the high school, so that um, performers in the Moonglores and SPF Jazz can kind of take a look at. Um, what the real people do it, what the, how the real professionals do it. Maybe that's one thought. Um, right now, a lot of us listen to the radio and some um, real jazz stations, and that's how we listen to our um, our jazz. But maybe to bring in some people to lecture us, you know, something like that. I want to try that. Okay, thanks, mm -hmm. Mr. Toriel. You've been uncharacteristically quiet. Maybe I could uh, yield to you. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, Bean, you've turned the microphone over to me. Uh, uh, how's your budget for next year? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I really think, you know, in, in regards to even what Whitney said, uh, I, I know we're on a, on a mission at this high school to change our schedule and make it a little bit more flexible. And I, I think what, what I see, uh, we've talked about a uh, proficient lesson, you know, lesson plan um, where small group lessons actually could happen again here at the high school because at one point they did when every kid had a study hall we, we had our small group lessons and we weren't pulling kids out of academic classes and it really ran smoothly and the level of our music um, I was going to say in wind ensemble we're not that we can't play proficient music now but the level we played at that point was was even more proficient than we're doing right now and I know it's hard to believe because a lot of people say gee we hear in the moon glowers we're hearing your concert bands and your choirs I mean but it did you know we, we had the more time with the kids and they didn't feel so stressed because they did have this free period um, so that's that's one plan that I'm hoping that when we do go to a little bit more flexible schedule, there will be no. I, you've told me that there, the morning classes will, will will not exist. The AM class. So yeah. So with that being, you know, I won't have to bring Moonglowers in at quarter to seven. I can even go back to maybe like a seven or seven fifteen rehearsal time with SPF Jazz and Select or whatever else Mrs. Wilman would like to do at that time. Um, you know, and, and it's, I'm sure I'm being honest when I say of all supervisors would say this that. You know, if, if our budget does increase and we're able to get some extra dollars, uh, you know, things like Wickman, he's talking about is great to, to get a, an artist in residence. Um, sure. It costs a little money, but it, it, what an experience for the kids. I mean, we have one of our, you know, teachers that works with some of our kids, Andy Fusco. He was lead alto with uh, the Buddy Rich Band, and he's been on a number of CDs. Um, you know, to have him, he works, uh, teaches at Kane College right now. To have him come in and work, you know, a month or whatever and, and sit in next to these kids, uh, you know, we've had some of those experiences, but uh, Bobby Watson was one who was an outdoor player who did come in and work with the kids when uh, they won the McDonald's Jazz Festival. Uh, it's, it's costly, mm -hmm. and uh, 
you know, we've talked about our facility. I'd love to upgrade our facility so that it becomes more secure. And, you know, I think the kids will respect, obviously, even the equipment more when they feel that, you know, everything there is, is pretty much in good shape and it's not like, you know, where walls are cracking and we've got to keep repairing the same instrument from 1965. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's the area I'm looking in. And, you know, as far as the staff goes, I mean, you could see the numbers. We're, we're increasing in numbers. I know that's hard to believe, but sure. our numbers are going to go up over the next three or four years, and you're not going to do it with a, a band director and a half and one choral director, mm -hmm. not if we're going to maintain our level of proficiency. I don't think our numbers are increasing because, number one, an increased student population, but I think you're, you're, you're generating an interest in music in the elementary and, and the middle schools as well. I think it's twofold. Right. Well, and I, I don't mean to neglect them, but our feeder program is excellent. The, the mm -hmm. staff that, that works in the elementary and middle schools, I mean, they do a great job, sure. and I'm sure Whitney and Merrill had a number of these people, and mm -hmm. that's why they're here with us. Right. That's right. Mr. Thomas, any, any ideas on, you know, just looking to the future? Uh, yeah, you know. Well, Whitney talked a lot about uh, listening, and I think that's probably one of the uh, least favorite activities uh, of our students. I shouldn't say that. That's one of the least favorite activities of our students for the type of music that we teach. They, you know, they have no problem listening to the popular stations, but it's very hard for us to, to uh, get a concept or a feel or an approach across if they don't have a reference. You know? um, so I think things like technology, I know there's uh, a lot of technology booming all over the place in the high school, and uh, hopefully that can you know, work its way down to the music department. Uh, things like a listening lab where it's set up where the kid, the student can go in uh, and listen to a CD or, you know, and we can say, you know, this is, this is the sound that we want, you know, listen to how that clarinet player phrased this or, uh, and there's also tons of software out there uh, that can help with things like rhythm, pitch, uh, that, that can work really, really well, I think, that they can even come in on their lunch. Or, or if they have a prep, or a prep. If they have a free period, they can come down and work on things like that. But once again, that goes along with, with, must, with, uh, with what Mr. T said about money and you know, uh, really building up, I want to say, the, the music department mm -hmm. from what it is now in terms of renovation. But I, you know, that stuff can only happen after, I would think, the band room gets a facelift mm -hmm. uh, or the choral room gets you know, a, a tuck here and a tuck there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that kind of thing, I think, will really help to push yeah. the musicians to the next level, you know, right. beyond band, beyond right. chorus. You know, so they have some kind of concept, uh, you know, of what, you know, a beautiful tenor voice sounds like. Mm -hmm. Or uh, even a recording studio, like a mini recording studio would be, would be outstanding, you know, just uh, similar to what you've Describe, but we would produce the music ourselves and be able to listen to it. And, and well, that's, well, that was my next step. <laughs> oh, <that'd be laughs> see, we're, hey, we're thinking, uh, we're the thinking same alike. All right. Year, we would settle for heat and air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, can we spackle some of the holes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The thing is that um, we wish we had a music. I mean, I know oh, that most kids um, get some kind of music theory with their class, uh, with their you know private teachers. Um, but I'm taking, you know, for the music entrance exams for college, you know, you have to take all these you know, music theory, you know, tests, and I'm flipping. I flipped out. I had, I was so nervous because um, I don't know every little thing, and I, you know, with, um, I get a little taste for it, playing the music and singing, um, but I don't know every little thing that I really, really want to know. And now I'm going to college, and I'm going to be taking the college class music theory, and that I'm so nervous about it. <laughs> But you know, it's funny, Merrill. <laughs> Mr. Tutorial and I were just speaking about that uh, <laughs> just the other day, and that ties in with Mr. Tutorial was saying about staffing. You know, mm -hmm. coincidentally, there is a music theory course. I don't know if you know it no. in your in the course of study right now. Sure, I've taught it for several years. I've taught it also. You've taught it too. Mm -hmm. It hasn't mm -hmm. been taught since I think my first year was the, here I've was the last year that it was taught. Oh, okay. Um, but without proper staffing. Um, there's no way it can run with yeah. all the other things that are running, but you also need it's there. It's, a it's there. Yeah. Interested. You know, and if you're, you're, the numbers of music majors that you have mm -hmm. are small in comparison to classes mm -hmm. filling up, yeah. you know, with many more students. Mm -hmm. So that's always been a bit of a problem. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and another issue at the high school, uh, and, and I, I, I do want to get to you, yeah. Mrs. Wellen, um, 
<coughs> is, you know, ha you know, can can a student, and I, and I think to a large extent they can, um, you know, can you take the AP Science and the AP Math and the AP Social Studies and the AP English and also be involved in the music program? Mm -hmm. I think you can, but then we add, uh, you know, the music oh. theory component to that. I mean, that just complicates all those classes that that student wants to take. It, it, it without, without a doubt, you know, it, it complicates the issue, but. Um, and, and, cr and, and maybe Merrill or Whitney can answer this, you know, can you have, you know, can you have the best of both worlds? Can you, can you take a rigorous academic program and at the same time be actively engaged in the music program? You can, except um, sometimes for, I don't want to speak for everyone, um, but for some people you just, you know, get a taste for what it's like and you know, you don't perfect one single thing, you just kind of get a taste for it. Mm -hmm. um, you can be really great at something, but you might not be, you know, perfectionist at it. And that's why my senior year, I really wanted to, you know, donate, uh, you know, put all of my time towards the music and the dance and also acting. And I try to do this as much as I can, so <laughs> it's helped. Okay. I, th I think the main idea is exposure. Um, while it's required for students to participate in academic courses such as math, science, English, and history, mm -hmm. it's also good to expose students, I think, to different things like the arts program, um, you know, athletics things, to just make a student more well-rounded. Uh, even if they don't um, decide to pursue music uh, professionally or seriously, it it would be doing a disservice to not expose that upon a student just because of the fact that someone else thinks that it's not important. So it is important to put money, I'd have to say, in the music department so that we can expose more people. And without exposure, we would have just a student who knows math and English, which is good, but I don't think that will help society if we were just to have math people and science people. I would like to see if, if, if we did progress someday and scheduling allowed it to have, I don't want to say a requirement, but as part of a high school education that, that a student would be exposed to at least one music or one music art course or even if you want to call it a, a humanities approach where you have an art history, a music, a, a drama composition, something like that because I really think that, you know, you, you take any of the, the corporate world or anywhere else on Friday and Saturday nights, they're in New York City going to musicals, going to operas, going to concerts, and you know, a lot of it I think stems from that they, they lack this at, at an early age, and now it's, you know, now they're reaching out for it. Right. Okay. Mrs. Wilman, I want to give you the opportunity to talk about the future and, and, and how you see it. Uh. Uh, I want to make one um, remark regarding what Merrill said um, in terms of trying to be very good at one thing. I think one of the things that impressed me when I first came here 19 years ago, and I don't think I've ever told Vinny this, but um, his pursuit of excellence, I think in everything that we did, drove me to imitate the same. I mean, in a different world, and I think that because the two sides of the department worked well together and we followed that uh, edict, that we ended up um, achieving that and if we weren't able to achieve that then we went a different direction. Excellence I think in, in, in all areas is what we strive for and I think when you do that you teach students how to get the most out of themselves and uh, what is appreciated and that it's not a joke and you know so those things are important. I think that there's more students today that are taking voice lessons and in turn have more theory um, with that, more instrumentalists are taking lessons. That has ballooned over the years by far. Um, I think that's directly responsible for the success we had this year. It, truly it was the most exciting year for me and for the students in terms of all state chorus and region chorus. Um, as a high school to attain the highest number of students in both region and all state chorus. Um, it was a pretty nice feat, and I was very proud of the students this year. And that's also their individuality and their practice and their, their, their excellence in, uh, in trying out for these groups. The future could be improved as far as I would like to have a men's course very much, but there are things that we do give up 
in terms of scheduling and in terms of sports. A lot of the men in the course are in heavy duty sports. Um, so there are time problems there that perhaps could be worked at some point. Um, I think we could do more madrigals. Madrigals is another area that I think we do, could do very well. I think in terms of the rep theater program, um, we were infants at this about four or five years ago, and slowly we've learned how to raise money, how to fund the whole thing ourselves, how to get um, staff members to participate, um, our plan for next year. Having earned a good deal of money is to use some of that money to have staff members as choreographers, as a director of the pit band. We had students run and, do, and play in the pit band this year. Whitney was one of them. In fact, the amazement I had was that I don't think they ever played one note on the page. And how they each knew what the other guy was playing <laughs> is always amazing to me, but it was wonderful. <laughs> um, so that, that's a goal. I think that we can benefit from expertise from other people um, in that area. We've, we've been able to build the whole idea of set design and uh, acting and uh, characterizations. I think we've really grown in the last four or five years. Uh, I'm proud to be part of the department. I really enjoy it. I'm proud of these kids. They're outstanding. Well, they really. certainly are. Uh, and, we, and as I said before, we have a number of other students. I know of two, and I'm, there may be others that, that, are, that are pursuing a music. In, in there's three, I think. Three. Uh, there's Katie Jackson, Courtney McDonald. Mm -hmm. Those are the two I was thinking mm -hmm. of. Jeremy Dodge is also okay. pursuing Jeremy. some type of music. Um, Cara Bristol. Uh, there's quite a few that I, th I think even go on, and even though they're not going to be music majors, like even Whitney is not going on to, to, uh, to teach music. He's going on more in the recording industry, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many areas they branch out into that it's and just incredible. And even Cara Bristol. I think she's going to Brigham Young. Now, I don't know if you've ever had a chance to see the concerts around Christmas time on television from Brigham Young. They are unbelievable. I'm so excited for her. I hope she tries out for choir there. They are fabulous concerts. So, you know, a lot of kids go on to courses and travel Europe with them, and we have four high school students traveling Europe this summer with a special honors course um, for about, I guess, about 18 days. Well, a quick example, I had a student, Dave Galemi, who played lead trombone with the Moon Glowers. He was very, very good. He went on to Seton Hall University, and he just happened to pick the right year because he ended up playing the jazz band there, and the jazz band also is the pep band for the basketball team. It was the year they went to the Final Four, and he came back and he was like, Final Four, they went to the Final Two. Yeah. And he says, we were treated like gold. He says, you know, we hung out with the players, we went to their hotel, we ate with them, it was just great. Mm -hmm. So you never know where it's gonna, you know, where it's gonna take you. It leads to many opportunities. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we set out um, today to, first of all, highlight many of the accomplishments of the music program. I think we've done that pretty well. And to inform the public and the viewers on just many of the, the facets and components of the music program. I think we've done that pretty well also. So before we wrap things up, I just want to uh, you know, ask any of the guests, uh, are there other things that, we've, that I've failed to mention or that you'd like to mention before we, uh, uh, before we conclude the show? Any last minute comments from uh, I need a new dressing room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the band closet is, <laughs> is losing its appeal. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I started to talk about uh, time commitments and I didn't, I didn't really finish talking about okay. concert groups. Okay. Concert groups uh, are classes. Concert band and the wind ensemble are classes that the students try out for. Uh, the Wind Ensemble is the honors course, and I'll let Mr. T talk about that, but the concert band, which I uh, co-conduct with him, uh, is a class that they sign up for that meets every day. Uh, and it doesn't meet after or before school. That's the extent of the time commitment for a concert band. Uh, we also uh, have other smaller ensembles, such as woodwind ensembles and a brass ensemble, uh, which we will be continuing with next year. It took a little hiatus for the past year, but uh, we'll be bringing that back. Uh, and that does meet before and or after school, depending upon the schedules of the members. Uh, but that's pretty much uh, the concert groups and the jazz bands we already did talk about uh, are before school, as Mr. T talked about. But uh, Mr. T wanted to talk about the wind ensemble. I'm sure he'll talk about that. Well, I, I, I just mentioned the wind ensemble sure. had, did have an outstanding year where they did become one of the top bands in the state and perform the College of New Jersey. But when you're asking summing this up, I was just giving it a little thought as you were, as you were mentioning. There's two things I've mentioned. Number one, um, as you look at these two fine 
students here. Um, the parents that support our organization are just outstanding, whether we call them the Music Booster Association, or I'm just going to get the parents of these children. Um, I've said it a number of times where, I mean, I feel bad when people say to me, well, I have to go to work tomorrow. And like, I, I don't think I've ever really said, you know, geez, I have to get up and go to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Mr. Thomas and Mrs. Wellman well enough that we joke about that, but I, I know they feel the same way. And it's, it's because of kids like this. Um, as people will say, you know, are good, only good kids in the music department or because they're in the music department, does that make them good kids? Mm -hmm. And I mean, you look at your top 50% of the school, I would bet the top 50% are in our program. Doesn't mean we don't have any at the bottom, but I would guarantee you that top 50% are there. Um, the parents are just outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we try and thrive off that, and, and I hope that other than teaching Merrill and Whitney music, I, I hope I taught them a little bit about being good people, um, mm -hmm. and that sometimes success comes your way uh, just by being a good person and, and doing the right thing. Uh, and I think the three of us try and set that example every time we can. And above all, we'd like to thank you. I know this is your first year, but thank you for all your support. And we'll be looking for financial and otherwise in the future. Um, and that's about the best way I could sum it up. Okay. Yeah, you know, Whitney kind of summed it up too, similar to what you said. And Whitney, somewhere along the line when, when, when he was talking, he said, I have fun. I mean, I enjoy it. And that's the key. And, and obviously, you three enjoy um, being instructors. And Merrill, obviously, its enjoyment from being involved in the music program and that, that that really is the key element in, in that work and uh, you know, it's not work it's pleasure and it just you know maybe people consider it to be work but it's you know, it's a way of life for you and it's a it's a passion and that's uh, it shows in the, in the music program that's it it's not just fun but it's almost a driven fun mm -hmm. you know once you get into that circle it's like magical kind of a thing that happens you know everybody is just in the same page and it's an excitement it is what's really great about it is that with the short amount of time that we have <coughs> every I mean all of you guys you make us really you make us work really hard with that short amount of time and that's what makes everything get done and there's not time wasted so. Well, to our viewers, I um, would first of all like to thank you for watching, and um, this will probably be our last show for the summer, so I look forward to seeing you again in September. For Conversation, this is Dave Heisey.